Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how you can capture a cabochon using the Viking weed technique. So it can look something like this. So I'm just using a nice Amazonite cabochon here in a teardrop shape. You get this nice effect all the way around. So it's quite a similar technique to just netting a cabochon, but you just get this different result because we're just attaching our loops in a slightly different way. So if you want to learn how to make this, then keep watching. These are then the materials that we need to use. Now in this case I'm working with two different gauges of regular round wire and it's just a copper wire. The first one here is a 1mm in thickness and that's going to be the base wire and the structure that's going to hold the piece in place. The second one here is a 0.4mm so that's going to be the weaving wire that we're going to make our loops and viking it with. And then the last thing you'll need is of course your cabochon. So in my case I'm using this Amazonite cabochon it's got a nice teardrop shape. This specific one measures four and a half centimeters by three centimeters, but really this technique will work for any shape and size of cabochon that you've got. So let's get it all together and let's get started. So then the length of wire that we'll need is first of all a length of a one mil wire, and I'm working here with about 40 centimeters. Now it really depends on the stone that you're using, but I know this will be plenty for me and also be enough to then do the bale. So this will probably work for most stones. If you're working with a small one, you can then make it shorter. Or if you know you got a really big thing, then you can always make it longer. So really just make sure you have enough wire to go around the stone and then make a bale. And then also we'll need a length of a 0.4 mil wire. And in this case, I've cut off two and a half meters. Now that is quite a bit and sounds like a lot to work with, but I'm not gonna be working with this full length the whole time. What I like to try and do is make the capturing of the cabochon and then weaving the bale of the same length of wire if I can. So I'm actually gonna be able to do that with this. That's why I've got such a long length. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can easily cut off a shorter length. So maybe say a meter to a meter and a half, depending on the size of your stone, and just do the capturing of the cabochon separately and then do the bale afterwards. That's completely up to you, but this is what I'm working with. So then the first thing we need to do is make a shape that the cabochon is going to sit on. So I need to get my cabochon out here. And then also my length of my one mil wire. So that's what we're going to be working with first. And then we basically need to create the shape of the cabochon, but just a slightly bit smaller than the actual cabochon itself. So what I quite often find helpful is, first of all, you've got to just work in the middle of your wire here. So you've got an end on both sides. But I always find it quite helpful to just use the cabochon itself as a template and then just shape my wire around it so a bit like this you can also just do it freehand or use tools to help get the shape that you need but this just helps get the basic shape I find so like this and then obviously it's going to spring open a bit but then I have a basic shape that I can work with and then I need to make it a bit smaller because I know it needs to fit the cabochon but just slightly smaller than the cabochon itself so I also am going to keep referencing back to this. I'm just going to reference on the back of my cabochon actually, because that's where this is going to sit, just inside of the outer edge. So this is still a bit too large. So just keep manipulating the shape till I feel like it's going to fit a little bit more. So you can just gently pull here. It keeps the shape nice, but you're just basically making the shape a bit smaller. So we're still getting there now. This more look, looks more like something. Got a nice shape and it's just slightly smaller than the outside edge of the cabochon itself. So this is near enough what my shape on the wire here is going to be to fit the cabochon nicely. So then once you have that, and obviously it's the same for any shape of cabochon that you have, so you just make it whatever shape that your cabochon is. So oval, you want to make an oval shape with your wire and so on. And then what I want to do with this shape as well is right now my ends of my wire there is just crossing over each other and going outward. I just want to fix that. So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and then I want to basically have them come the opposite direction of where they are. So I want to put a bend on each wire coming back on itself basically. So right here at the tip where the wires are crossing over, I'm going to grab hold of one wire at a time, just starting with the back one. And then I keep hold of that and then bend my pliers here backwards so it doesn't have to be perfect yet we can always adjust this angle so it's coming back out in the same direction that the other one is actually and then we want to go on the other side and do the same thing with the other wire 
in the same point. So these two bends are going to lay nicely right next to each other. Bend it out towards the opposite direction. And like I said, the angle of these right now doesn't matter too much. Because we can always fix that. But then this is going to be where the wires are sticking out now. That's going to then actually be the beginning of the bale. We're going to use these tails to make the bale with. But for now we have the basic shape in place. What I then want to do now though is just because you can see it springs open because there's nothing to fasten it. So I just want to fasten this top up here before we then start making the actual weave that's going to hold the cabochon. So this is where we then need to get a 0.4mm wire out. I just want to actually just make these angles a little bit less harsh. They're coming up a bit more nicely towards the top but still have that angle to them. So I'm going to get my 0.4mm wire here and by the way as well while you're doing this always just keep referencing back to your stone and see if it still fits. You can see my angles are right there at the top so that's fine. But then from a 0.4mm wire here if you're just working with the length that you just want to do for the capturing of the cabochon and then do the bale separately. You can just do that one length and then start on one end of your 0.4mm wire here. But because I'm working with this long length to try and get the capturing and the bale in the same piece of wire, I've actually gone up about one to one and a half meters of my wire here, starting there, so almost roughly in the middle of the length that I've cut off. And that's where I want to then start just wrapping this together because then I have one length of my 0.4mm going one way and then one the other way. So I'm just going to start doing this. So just right here where those angles are, I just want to do a very slight figure of eight weave to hold them together. So I'm just going around one wire first twice, right at that angle. You can always just use your pliers to make sure it sits in the right place. Squeeze them together nicely. And then cross over to the other side because that's what we want to do, make sure they sit and stay in place so it's not going to keep moving around while we keep working with it. So just hold it to begin with and then come around the other side with that figure of eight weave and down through the middle, again twice on that side. And you can just do this a couple of times just to make sure it holds its shape in place then. So cross from one side, wrap twice, over to the other side and wrap twice. And I'm just going down through the middle here. Now I don't want to be wrapping too far up as well though because this is going towards the bale and I'm not making that till I've done the whole cabochon first of all. Also we don't necessarily have the right shape in place. So this wire that I've been using to wrap with just around here the top, that is now going this way out. So this one I'm going to leave to then continue with the bale once I get there. And that's just how I make sure that the whole piece is being made with one length of wire. So I'm just going to put that out of my way. And then grab the other length here. That's now pointing down towards our shape. Now obviously like I said if you don't feel comfortable with this. You think this might get in your way. You can easily just use one length for this. And then one length separately afterwards. For your bail. That's completely up to you. But then now what we need to do. Is start. Getting all our loops in place here so we can start capturing the cabochon. So we've just got this wire ready. It doesn't matter what side you start from, it doesn't matter at all, it's the same thing. I just kind of for some reason prefer to start over on here on that side. So I'm now coming up through the shape and we need to start making our first line of loops. So to then make these loops what I'm going to do is get all the way to the end of my point formula wire here. So the length that we're making the loops with and capturing around the cabochon. First we need to make some rows of loops before we bring in the cabochon because obviously there's nothing here to capture it just yet. But to start making the loops what I'm going to do is take my end down through the shape again and then pull it not all the way through but most of it just do it gently so you don't get any kinks as well in your wire. So every time you see one that would form, so if I kept pulling here, this would turn into a kink. Make sure you catch that and then just undo it before you keep pulling. So just something roughly a bit like this. And then I'm going to go back to my end. And then what we need to do is I'm coming down through the shape, out below my frame wire here. And then I'm going to come around and go back through 
this big loop that we have in here now but we're making sure that we're capturing this frame as well and pull it back all the way through so we have this big loop now where we're capturing that frame wire as you can see there and then this is really then up to you how you want to do this you can either just pull this loop down by hand and then do that the whole way so you kind of do them freehand what you can also do is the first row of loops that we're going to do if you want them a bit more guaranteed to be the same size and that you can always get a pair of pliers now in this case this is just some six step bell making pliers you can use round nose pliers and go to the same point every time it's completely up to you but then just choose say roughly what size loop you would want place your pliers onto your frame all the way up to the beginning part of your loop so like that and then you can basically start pulling your wire down and then you get your loop pulled nicely down but it's going to stop right around the plier there and then that way you have the per perfect shape and size of loop as you can see there and then you can just keep doing that using that you make sure all of these loops in the first row are going to be the exact same size so like I said choose what size you want and then just pull your wire down around your pliers so that's a nice way to make sure you get them nice and even so there we go, that's the first one nicely in place and you also make sure that you're looping your weaving wire back through the loop of itself because that's how we make sure these loops get, get nice and secure and are going to hold it in place so we need to continue now Oops. keep using the same length of wire so now we need to come back down through the shape again pull almost all your wire through so you have this big loop at the top then take your end coming underneath there through the shape and then back around to make sure you capture that frame and back through the big loop of itself so you can see again we're capturing that frame in place and then just pull it down slightly so we get a bit of a big loop there and then if you're using your pliers make sure you use the same size then place them in there and put them up right next to the previous loop that you made and then pull this loop that we're making now nice and tight around the pliers and there we go and then you can see where they have two loops they look nice and even and basically you just want to keep going like this so I'm going to just do it one more time, go down through the shape leave yourself a big loop to then get your tail and go back through that loop making sure you catch the frame make sure you don't get any kinks pull it down so you have a big loop left to put your pliers into before we tighten down that loop and then pull the loop tight around your pliers and there we have the third one again nice and even size Now these ones are going to be quite big it's just also so you can see more clearly what I'm doing but it really doesn't matter how large or small you can make it much smaller as well if you want to or even larger it completely depends on the look that you want for your stone so keep doing this all the way around the shape till you get up to the other side so I've now gone all the way around the frame here until I reach the other side the very top of it and then what I just want to say is you might find that you don't have the perfect spacing to get the si even size loop there all the way around so you might end up having a bit of a gap there but not enough space to make another loop that's not really a bigger deal that big of a deal because what you can do is then either push your loops together a little bit and do them all equally and then give yourself that little bit more space to make another loop or you can then push them up towards the frame to fill in the gap and basically just stretch out the loops a bit so that's a way to kind of make up for that so you don't have to worry about that being perfect because you can adjust these afterwards so now at this point we then need to go back to the other side and start making the second go around with our loops so as you can see I just have a little gap here at the top where I have where I ended up here then back to where I began 
So I wanted just to cover that little gap as well. But as you can see, it's not the same frame as all the way around, so I won't be able to fit my pliers in here. So this one, we just have to do freehand and try and make it match the other loops as good as we can. So just put it down through the frame the exact same way you've made your other loops. And then come back through this loop around the frame and then back through it. Making sure now that we're on the other side of the bale, because that's what we want to cross, that little gap. And then you want to gently pull this into the loop that we want. So just take your time, do this gently. We want this to be sitting right at the beginning of that very first loop. And end up having it be as close to the same size as the other ones and the same shape if you can as well. So there we go, that covers that little gap nicely. So now we're back basically at the beginning here, so now we can start doing is going into the second row of loops and into this viking weave that's going to then catch the cabochon in place. So if you're familiar with how to do a netted cabochon, then what you'll know that up until now it's been the exact same thing, but it's from now on that it's going to be a bit different. I've also done a tutorial previously on a netted cabochon, so you can have a look at that if you want to. It's the same basic principle here, because up till now it's been the same thing, but the final look you're going to get is just a little bit different, because we're going to be doing the next few levels differently. We're still going to be making loops, but we're just going to be doing it in a different place than otherwise. So what we need to do is start looking at a piece here, and then we need to start making that next line, the next row of all our loops. But on the netted cabochon, what I did what you need to do is you go through each of these open loops that we made, so the big gaps there. For the Viking weave, we actually don't do that. We use the little loops that are connected around the frame themselves. So those are the ones we actually want to use now. So then I've just gone on to the other side here. You just work with yours however you feel comfortable. And then we again go back to the end of our point formula wire here that we're going around to capture the cabochon with. The other one is still just out of the way, all the other wires there. Now what can be quite helpful is if you make a little hook on the end of your point formula wire. It's just instead of going in and then out too many times, we can do this more in one motion. So what we want to do is actually, it's coming right from the beginning here, so right before the fir very first loop that we made. So I'm going to jump over that loop, actually over to the second one. Then we want to go through that second loop, so put your wire down through there, and then with that hook that we made, we have the hook coming up back up through the first one. So I'm going down through the second one and up through the first one. And then as I've got a little tail here, I then also want to go back through the actual big loop that we have. So I'm just going to pull it a bit tight and then show you in detail. As you can see, it's coming down now. So I've taken the tail of wire down through the second, back up through the first, and then gone back through itself again as well. So like that. And then here, again, we just have to do this by hand. We can't use suppliers here. So we just pull this gently until we then get another loop on top of that very first one. So it's going to be placed, the loops on the second row here, going all the way around, and the following ones are going to be placed right above the ones on the first row. So we're not kind of pushing them to the middle of each loop as we did in the netted cabochon. So that's what makes this a little bit different and it gives a different look as well. So that was the first one. And you just pull it to however tight you want these to sit. It's completely up to you depending what look you want. So I'm now coming out of the first loop. So that means I want to jump over my second one and into my third one. So we always skip over one first. And then with this hook that we made, we come back up through the previous one. So I'll come from the first one, go down through the third, and back up through the second. Like that. And then put it back through your big loop as well. So back through itself. And then we can gently pull this. Again, make sure you don't get any kinks as you go. Just do it gently. And I kind of find that it quite helps to hold your fingers on here. It stops things moving around too much and it helps get in the nice loop shape as well. And you pull it down so this next one looks roughly about the same 
size and distance as the first one we made. Pull this across. So we now, basically every new little loop that we make hooks around the previous one that's attached to the frame. So that's what we're doing here. Go back to the next one. And all the way throughout as well, what I recommend is just keep smoothing out your wire along the way. Especially right around there where your wire is coming down to where you're going to make your loops. You want that to be nice and smooth so we don't have any obvious kinks or bends on this wire down here. So I'm coming out of the second one, jump over one, go down through the fourth one and back up through the third one. Like that. So you have a little tail and then pull that back through itself, the big loop. And your wire is going to kind of keep curling up on you, that's natural. Just keep on doing it and keep smoothing it out as you go so you don't get any kinks. And just pull it down, hold your finger over it, that helps until you get to about the same point as the previous one. What I also find can help is by just gently pushing the loop down a little bit with your thumb and then pulling up with the wire here. If you just want to nudge it a little bit more and then that's now my third one done. So you can see these loops are now going exactly on top of the previous ones so we're hooking into the small loops instead of through the big loops there. So that's how you do this. You want to keep going all the way around with this again to the other end and then we already have that loop that crosses the gap on top there and we just use that in the exact same way as well. So I've now gone all the way around this round as well until I've gone back to the beginning there and then we're ready to start the next round. What I just want to do is put the cabochon on here and see how it's going and then you can just gently fold this up around the cabochon so how it's going to end up sitting as well and you're also going to get an idea of how much you're going to have to do. So that will also depend on how thick your cabochon is, how many rounds you're going to end up having to do. Now I'm going to still have to do a few more than this but I can see that it's coming up the sides so if we look here, it's going to be folding up the sides nicely. So I might need to do another one or two, depending. We'll see how it goes. But then I'm back to the beginning here. And then all you want to do is basically continue doing the same thing. So go back to what you were doing. Now the only difference is now we have two rows of our loops rather than just the first one that we were just going through. So what you want to make sure to do and just be aware of is... I'm coming from that just before the very first loop that we originally made. Now instead of going back down to the bottom row and going through there, we want to go through the top row now only. So only catch that little loop that connects down to the previous row. Only catch that one on the top row that we just made. It's still the same principle where we jump from the one we're coming out of, jump over one, so that's over the first one, and then go down through the second one. But only the top loop that we've just made on the second row there. Go down through that and then back up through the first loop again only on that second row. And then also pull your tail through itself. And then pull it gently to make your first loop on this next row. Again, just take your time so it's going to sit and look exactly how you want it to. Again, I personally, personally prefer to try and make the rows even as well so this is going to be about the same size as I did the previous one so something a bit like that and then you just continue in the same way so always go back to your very end of your wire Come the one you're coming out of jump over the next one and down through the one after that so that's my third one in this case and back up through the previous one and then go through itself and then pull tight gently, pull it down nicely. So when we're then pulling this, it's going to end up looking as much like the previous one as possible. So you want to make sure when you do this, you don't pull too tight because then that kind of stops the whole thing. But just do it gently and make sure you keep the curve for the loops there. So keep doing this, remembering only to go through the row that you just did. So not all the way down, only the previous row. And go through all the way around to the beginning point again and then what you just want to do basically is keep checking when you've made a row and see how it see seems to sit on the cabochon. If you think it's going to be about time to be able to capture it and you're only going to have one row left to do then I'm going to show you what we do then but just keep making your rows until you get to that point.
So I've now reached back up to the top again there, so where we're going to start the next row. Before I do, I then check my cabochon against it here, and then make sure it's lying nicely centered on top of my shape, and then basically the way you can check is just to fold some of your weave up there, some of your loops to the side to check how far up they come. So you can see mine are coming pretty far up, so basically I think I'll be able to get away with just doing one more round. So what I'm going to do is just fold all this up around, all the way, making sure that from the back, it's easy to see in the back there, it's still sitting nicely with the shape, so it's even all the way around. And then I want to start my last row. So if you feel like you can hold the cabochon in there nice and now you can keep it in there. Otherwise you can just do a few more loops before you then pop it in, because you obviously want to make sure you capture it before we go all the way around. But then I just want to continue doing my loops here in the exact same way. So I jump over the first one and go through the next one and then come up through the previous one. Then remember to pull your tail through and then when we're pulling this down we still want to Make sure that it sits nice and it looks right compared to the rest of the loops. You can always use your pliers as well to help get your shape in place. So it's about still the same size as the ones on the side. But what we also need to make sure of now is that we're getting this weave or these loops on the side to start coming across a little bit the top along the side there. Because that's what's going to capture it and hold it in place. So that one is just capturing that a little bit more. So you want to make sure to do that all the way around. Jump over the next one go through the third one, back up through the previous one, and then pull through itself as well. And then pull down to make your loop. And like I said, I find that it can quite often help to push the wire a little bit into the loop instead of just pulling, because then if you just pull, you can risk pulling some of the previous loops out of shape if you're not careful. And again with this one, just make sure that when you I've got to the point where you feel it's about the same size as the previous one you just made, the same distance there, and also the ones down the side. Then, also that it just comes up and catches the very top outer edge of your stone there. So as you can see, it's nice if you can keep your loops all the way around as nice and even as possible. It just gives a nice finished look, but it's not too crucial really. It all depends on what you want for your piece. But it's quite freehand anyway, this. Again, make your next one, pull your loop down, like that. You can always open them out a little bit while you're at it. It's best to check your loops along the way as you go, because then you can just fix the one that you're at now making. But you can't really go back and fix previous ones, because then you've already moved on. And then there you go, you just keep going like this all the way around, making sure that the last row here just captures and holds that cabochon into place, all the way back up to the top again. So I've now gone all the way back up to the top there and done my last loop and then basically now the caption is in place so you see it's not going to go anywhere so it's captured nicely and also making sure that the shape sits nicely on top of the basic shape with the wire that you made. So that's all in place now. So what we're at now is we have the tail left, the rest of the weaving wire that we've been using to make the loops. Now what I just want to do is, instead of just cutting it off there, we need to just secure it first. So I'm going to just, just where, here at the top where I ended mine, within my very last loop, I'm going to just basically weave it downwards towards the back of the piece and towards the frame there. So we can just weave it in between the other loops that we've done and that's going to make it blend in nicely as well. So it's not going to become too obvious. So just, just on yours, whatever you feel that is suitable, just weave it down, looking away towards the back here. And then I just want to get right to the back so I can finish off the wire here securely in place as well. So something like this, just double check everything still sits the way you want it to. And then we can just weave this out into place. So what I'm going to do is weave a couple of times around that base wire 
So wrap it a couple of times, so basically coiling it there a few times and then that secures it enough so that we can cut off the excess. It's just around in the same place here. Making sure that your coils are nice and tight next to each other. And then, once you're happy with that, just make sure that it's sitting nicely. Once we have that then, we can then take our cutters, I'm using some flush cutters here, and I'm just going to cut off the excess, but just leave about a millimetre tail, if that. So, what I'm going to do with that little bit of wire now sticking out, I'm just going to take my chain nose and just make sure to tuck that in. I prefer to leave that little tiny bit of tail so we can tuck it in, rather than cut it off so the end of the wire is out towards the outside of your piece. I'd rather try and tuck it away towards the inside there, so it's basically in between the frame and the stone itself. That way it's not going to catch or scratch on anything at all. So there we go, now that's finished off. And we have the basic setting in place and the cavachon is in there now. So this is where we're at. We've done the whole capturing of the cavachon. What we have left to do now is the bale. So obviously I've got these two wires coming from the frame. I'm going to be using them to make the bale and then the long end of my point formula wire that I left right from the beginning. This is then where, say if you didn't like using this long length of wire and you want to start a separate one, so a separate one for the Viking weave here and then a separate one to make the bale, you just add in this new wire now to start weaving the bale. How you want to do the bale is really up to you. I just kind of prefer when it's a simple piece like that to also have the bale quite simple. So what I like to do is, I already started that figure of eight weave, I'm just going to basically continue that. So first of all, I want to make sure that these base wires have the correct angle and shape. Because instead of having them just come straight up, I actually do want them to come out, come out at an angle there. So they graduate outwards, until a certain point and I'm going to graduate inwards again. It just gives the bale a really nice shape. So I'm going to start with where they are now, and then go back and forth, so down through, and then wrap around to one side twice, down through, skip over to the other side, and wrap around that one twice, and then skip over to the other side, and wrap to, around that one twice, and that's the basic figure of eight weave there. It's really good for filling in shapes and making bales like this. I'm just going to keep going like this until I reach that point where I want to start graduating inwards again. So it's basically going to be the middle of the bale, what's going to end up being the top because it's going to get folded. And then I'm going to show you how I do that. So I've now reached the midpoint here where I'm going to start graduating inwards again. So what I'm going to do is just take my chain nose pliers and then right here where my weave has ended, I'm going to take, grab onto my wire there and then bend it at an angle towards the other one, so it's going to go back inwards and the same on the other side so we get this shape where we can see it starts graduating inwards again and that's exactly what we want what we can always do to just open up the top to make it easier to weave is just gently bend these back out nicely with a curve there so we don't have any harsh kinks or bends so it looks like this, and now what we have to do is start weaving this section that graduates inwards. And that's always more difficult than weaving where it graduates outwards, because your wire, when you're weaving, it naturally wants to slip towards a narrow point, which obviously, in this section where we're graduating outwards, is easy enough because it wants to slip down and make it nice and neat, which is exactly what we want. But then up here, when we start weaving, so if I just I'm coming from this side, across to the other side, if I'm just, just going to start weaving, you can see my wire wants to slip upwards there because it's a narrow point. So what we need to do to avoid that happening is whenever we weave, I'm switching sides. So I'm going from this side that I just wrapped. When I'm going over to the other side, I want to make sure to hold that down. So press it down so it stays exactly where we want it to. And then we want to do the weave, the wrap here on the other side while we've got this pressed down. And do that twice, the exact same weave. So there we go, press it down nicely so you get a nice and tight weave, and then that's that one done. And then we're switching sides again, we do exactly the same. So the side that we just wrapped, we hold that down, press it down against the other wraps, and then just while holding that down, 
we weave the opposite side. And then that's basically the best way I find to wrap where it graduates towards a narrow point. So again, go to the other side, hold the one I just wrapped down, and switch over. And just keep going like this. So that's just a way to try and get this point as well, this part of the bale, nice and neat, the same as the other side. So keep doing this about the same length as the bottom one. And then once we get to there, we can then start bending the bale so it's going to look a bit more proper. So now that I reach back up to that end there, so we have the full length of the bale. So another half there on top of that where we made the bends. So now what we can do is actually shape the bale because we need these tails of the wire, the base wires, to come back down to the back. So I'm just going to get my bale making pliers here. You can use anything. You can use a pen or whatever you have. Crochet hooks I find really good for this as well, especially if you have them in different sizes. You just want to have something to bend this bale around. So I'm going to put this behind about the midpoint, just a bit below the midpoint. And then slowly and gently bend this around to get a nice shape. So you can see there from the front. I do find it looks really nice, just a bit extra touch with the bale. If you make them graduate outwards and then back inwards on the side, on the back side there, it just gives it a really nice shape. So now we have these tails coming back towards the back side of the piece and a weave has ended right down here as well which is perfect so now we just need to do is finish all this off and all I'm really going to do, you can do this in however way you want to again make sure that the bottom of these wires is pushed nicely in against the very beginning of the bale so you're not going to have a big gap there it's going to sit nicely like that so to secure this in place we well, basically can just make some swirls with these wires. You can do anything you want with these tails. We don't really need them to secure anything on because the cabochon is nice and in place. So we don't need to make a backing with them. But you could do if you wanted to make some kind of detail feature on the back. What I'm going to do first though is just use this 0.4 mil wire that we still have left from the bale. And I do want to just attach them though. So right here at the bottom where I've ended my weave I'm coming across as if I was going to do a wrap on the other side and I want to go up and just do one wrap around that leg and then instead of completing that I want to then actually attach this to the frame as well that we made so I'll get my end and then you just want to basically find a space anywhere that you can go through where the frame is and then come back up because we want to make sure obviously, that this is nice and secure and can hold the whole thing in place so it's a functioning bale pull it up there nice and tight so it's going to sit like that, we're going to fasten it this way come back around again the same leg and now I want to just switch over to the other side so down through the middle and then come up and just go around the leg on the other side here in the exact same way just to fasten that first and then the same principle on this side I want to just go through the frame really close to the bale so it's going to just blend in and pull it tight because within doing this is also pulling the bale the bottom of the bale there really nice and tight towards basically where the beginning of the bale is like that and then go back and just do another wrap or two along that leg secure it in place and then we can always just go to the other side and do one more as well because we want to make sure it's nice and secure when we finish off this wire so I'm going to do one more wrap here like I said you can do this however you want to it's a matter of looking at your piece and see what you think fits and looks nice and also it's going to be nice and secure for your piece I just want to press the bale forward a little bit like that. So I'm done with my weaving wire now because this I feel is nice and secure enough for what I want. So the way I'm going to just get rid of it then is by cutting it off and leaving that little short end of the wire still. Same as we did before. Then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and just make sure to tuck in that little end because we don't want to stick it out towards the back. I'm tucking it in and then just gently rolling my pliers in the same direction that it's going because now in my case here it gets tucked in in between these base wires so the end is not going to be 
So if wearing it as a necklace obviously, you don't want that end to catch on any clothes or fabric. So they might come undone or anything. So that's the end there. You can also finish it off on the frame. It's completely up to you. So now we've left these two legs. You can really do what you want to with them. What I might do is make just some simple swirls to keep the back nice and simple. So, if I cut off, because obviously we have too much here, I want to cut them down so I can make some small swirls. And then just, I do find that it's quite helpful cutting them off at the same time here, because then you make sure that they end up being the exact same size. So I'll cut them down. Then I'm going to just take my bill making pliers again. You can use round nose pliers for this, whatever you have. And then just grab one at a time. Might use the other one. And then make a little loop here. So I take one that's pointing outwards. Make the loop towards that side. All the way until the wire is basically touching itself and then I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side and this just also finishes off these nice these wires nicely all the way up and there we go so as you can see by cutting off the wires to begin with so the equal length it makes more sure that they're going to end up being the same size loop here and then just make sure that the ends there are nicely tucked away in towards the back and just press it in so it sits right up against the cabochon there so that's how that looks so it's nice and neat and simple in the back but still if it does flip over it's a nice back side but then that's the front and then you got your bail there as well so that's how you make this cabochon and you capture it with a viking weave and then you can make the back over you want to, it's completely up to you so it's pretty simple technique as long as you just get the hang of it so I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful, but otherwise, then thank you very much for watching. Hello there everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to capture a cabochon with wire so you can achieve something that looks a bit like this. So quite a simple look to it and also quite a simple technique, but you can get a nice neat finish like this. And it's nice and secure in there, it's not going to go anywhere, so you can then use it for whatever you want, a necklace or anything like that. So if you want to learn how to make this, then keep watching. So these are the things that I'm going to be using. Now the wire that I'm using here